Hey, it's Sarah with Loaves and Dishes, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this delicious carrot cake. Before we get to today's video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so that you'll be notified when we upload. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to zest and juice one orange, and I'm just going to put the zest and the juice in a little bowl and set that aside. Um, so this carrot cake is really delicious, but as with lots of desserts, there are some extra steps and um, it does take a tiny bit of work, but I think it was well worth it. Um, the cake turned out delicious. And um, if you didn't want to use orange zest and orange juice, you could just use orange extract if you have it. Um, I could not find it at our grocery store, so I went with the zest and juice route. I think that the zest and the juice um, give it, it's a more natural flavor because I mean it's not, you know, an extract. Um, so I prefer to go the zest and the juice route, but it is a little bit more work. Um, and the other thing that I forgot to get on film somehow, I don't know what happened to it, was you need to grate some carrots. It took me about six carrots. They were pretty small, but you need three cups of grated carrots for this recipe as well. Just making sure to get all of the zest off of my microplane. And then I, I am being really careful to get all of the juice in the bowl and not any seeds. Although, to be honest, have I ever eaten an orange that had a seed in it? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't eat very many oranges, but anyways, uh, this orange was very juicy. It had, I want to say close to maybe a quarter cup of juice. It was, it was a lot. But whatever juice your orange gives you will be plenty, I'm sure. So once we've gotten the orange juice and zested, <laughs> we're going to set that aside. And then in a bowl, you're going to mix two cups of sugar. Um, I'm just using a half scoop measure, a half, half cup measure because that's what fits in my jar. Um, two cups of sugar, two cups of flour, and then we're going to add some baking soda and some spices. And um, I ended up transferring this into my... Uh, KitchenAid mixer because I did not want to mix it by hand. <laughs> um, so we're going to add two teaspoons of baking soda and then our spices. So we're going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and then I also added some ground ginger, just about a teaspoon of ground ginger. You could also use fresh ginger. If you wanted to use fresh ginger, I would use a little bit less. I would maybe go with like half a teaspoon to even a quarter teaspoon because ground ginger, fresh ginger is kind of a strong flavor and you want to add a little bit of salt as well. And then you just want to mix that up. Um, I was just using a fork to mix that together. But again, I'm going to put it in my mixer in just a second. Okay, so I've got everything in my mixer. And now I'm going to add my wet ingredients. So I'm adding four eggs and three cups of grated carrots and I started to add the eggs and then I remembered oh yeah I have to add these carrots <laughs> so I got a little uh everything just sort of everything made it in the bowl so that's what really matters <laughs> doesn't necessarily matter the order um and then I turned the mixer on and I added one and one half cups of vegetable oil And then I'm also going to add half of my juice and half of my zest. And it doesn't have to be exact. Um, you know, just kind of eyeball it about half. And then I'm going to add one and a half cups of chopped pecans. I just gave that a really quick mix. <laughs> and then, okay, so now I have my cake pans out. I just thought to myself, I'm just going to spray these with a little bit of olive oil or a little bit of oil and that should be enough. It was not enough. The cake stuck. So I would recommend spraying with oil, putting down the parchment paper, like cutting out a circle, putting down the parchment paper and also dusting with flour. It was a really sticky batter and I underestimated that. The cake eventually came out and it looked okay, um, but there was some big hunks missing. So um, I would recommend doing everything you can to prepare the cake pans. 
and you just want to make sure that you pour an even amount of batter into both cake pans. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just eyeball it. You know when it's even. Trust your gut. <laughs> and then once we get all of the batter in the pans, we are going to bake those at 350 for 30 to 40 minutes. You want to keep an eye on it. And once your toothpick, once you can stick a toothpick in and it comes out clean, that's when you want to take them out. So then while the bat that's baking, we're going to make an icing. It's three blocks of cream cheese, one and a half sticks of butter. Um, we're going to add the rest of our zest and the rest of our juice, a quarter cup of sour cream and some powdered sugar, and between a quarter cup and half a cup of milk, depending on how thick or thin you want your icing to be. And you want to make sure that your cream cheese and your butter are at room temperature. My butter was not completely at room temperature and there was kind of big hunks of butter in the icing, but we love butter here, so it didn't really matter. So you just want to mix that together and set it aside. It's going to look like every icing you've ever seen. And, you know, give it a taste. And if you want to add anything extra to it like maybe if you wanted to add some more ginger if you wanted more orange more vanilla you could add almond extract you know whatever just give it a little taste and um, then you can add other things so now I put a little dollop of the icing down on the bottom of my cake plate and that's just to kind of secure the bottom cake in place you don't have to do that if you don't want to and now I am spreading on my icing um, you want to make sure that you use a lot of icing um, if you're not gonna freeze the cake before you ice it, you wanna make sure you use a lot so that you don't get crumbs in your icing. Um, and if you freeze it beforehand, you still kinda have to use a lot of icing, so it doesn't matter. But if you wanted to freeze it beforehand, that would help with the crumbs. And with icing a cake, um, it doesn't have to be pretty. You know, even if you do get crumbs in the icing, it doesn't matter. It's still going to taste the same. Um, I, I said that about a pie one time. That, you know, if you were just serving this pie for your family, that it doesn't have to be pretty. That they're going to love it either way. And it's not going to affect the taste. Somebody commented and was like, speak for yourself. I want my pies to be pretty. <laughs> So if you want it to be pretty, it's going to take a lot of practice. You're going to have to make a lot of cakes. Um, <laughs> I've made, I don't know how many cakes and mine are still just okay. They're not pretty. So it's rustic if it's not perfect, but you know, it's not going to change the taste if it's not perfect either. And uh, the icing recipe makes a lot of icing, so you, you know, feel free to be generous with your icing when you're putting it on. You want to use it all up because icing is delicious. And that is it. I'm going to cut a little piece so that you can see what it looks like. It came out perfect. My husband tried it and he said it was absolutely delicious. And there it is, just in time for Easter. <laughs> if you want to see more recipes, be sure to check out Loaves and Dishes, and thanks for watching.